Good morning, everyone. Sorry about that. Uh, I forgot to change the setting on the video to unlisted, so <laughs> it should be all good now. All you have to do is refresh. You shouldn't have to sign in and out. It's just on my YouTube side because I'm live streaming this through um, my YouTube account, but it's here private inside Crowdcast. So, okay, let's Good see. Morning, oh, hold on. Let me post. Let me pause this. Sorry about that. that okay, I think we're all good now. Uh, let me just come back. Okay, welcome. Welcome, welcome everyone to In The Paint Studio. This is my quarterly live stream that I do um, to invite you into my studio and play and answer questions. I have a few things that I am gonna be sharing and talking about. Let me turn my music down. Um, how's everybody doing today? Good, it says that everybody um, said refresh, worked, work, yay. We have, oh gosh, 350 people who signed up. And um, if you are here live, thank you so much for joining me. Um, if this is your first time in any of my uh, workshops or live streams, can you put a one in there? Thank you, Cheryl. Thanks, Jessica, for being my um, troubleshooters over there. They are some of uh, some of my um, community that has been on my live streams for a very long time. Yes, yay, refresh worked, yes. Sorry about that, I copied. So if you're familiar with live streaming, I use YouTube Live um, within OBS and I just usually copy my settings from a previous live stream. So I just realized the graphic is probably wrong in that too. So <laughs> I've got to go back in and change it. But when that happens, then it also, if I change the setting to private, then it s sets the video to private. So we're all good now. Um, if you got <laughs> confused and you're coming back now, welcome. If you're watching this in the replay, welcome. Um, I am thrilled you're here. My name is Tracy Bautista, and I um, some of you might be brand new to me because I think many of you came in through Sketchbook Revival. So thank you so much for joining me. For those of you who have joined me, for all of the people in my community and have been in my community for years, um, I am thrilled that you are here. I am a mixed media artist, an author, a designer, an educator, and a paint maker. I wear lots of different hats. And today I am going to share... Um, five of my favorite paintbrushes and show you how I use them to paint botanicals and florals or yeah florals and botanical shapes and marks um, it was one of the most <laughs> requested and asked questions from my sketchbook revival lesson so I figured it'd be easier to jump on live and um, and share with you so Let's see. Um, thank you, everybody. If you are joining again, just joining, and you see private, just hit refresh and you should be okay. So let me see who's here. Um, I think we, I probably have to scroll way back, but I see Linda, Mary, Jeannie, uh, Marlene. Uh, let's see. Kelly, Jessica, and Cheryl. Welcome, everybody. Lots of people with ones. Awesome. Um, there are lots of you who are brand new. Okay, so I'm going to do a little housekeeping. Um, Constance, Sabine, Laura, Kathleen, Jella, Linda, thank you everybody for being here. Um, hey Char, nice to see you. Pila, Sue, so many names that I recognize and so many that are brand new. So let me just give you a quick overview. I am on a uh, on my desktop and so this is going to look a little bit different if you're using the app to view this but i um, just want to most of you have found the chat and <laughs> i always pause at a funny space in when i am um <laughs> when i'm on video um so underneath here if you have a question because there's so many people here there is a question and answer tab, and um, you can ask a question right in here, and we've got one question, and you can um, 
I have to, I'm trying to look around my camera, but you can also vote up. So if you press this little vote up, you can vote up the questions. And that way, um, if there's something that everybody has multiple questions about, that will get pushed to the top of the list. So I am going to demo a little bit and then I'll get back. Um, I'll get back to the questions, but that's the best way to share the share your questions because we have so many people who are joining us. Okay, so I am thrilled you're here. I have, I'm going to move my camera down in a minute and I would love to know how many of you were part of Sketchbook Revival and and went through the lessons and um if there is something that you are working on in your sketchbook or art journal if you could share that inside the chat that would be amazing i'm going to um, bring up my camera and show you my desk in a minute but i have been thrilled too to see so many um pieces of artwork. So thank you for sharing them. And um, it's been fun to see how everybody has translated the lesson that I shared in Sketchbook Re Revival. I do have the journal. I'm going to show do a little show and tell. And then we're going to get into painting. So let me let me let me switch you're going to see a picture and then i will be right back let me just make this a little cleaner maybe <laughs> um okay hang tight for one second Okay, so you are seeing one of my desktops, studio desktops. This is where I broadcast and I have a few different areas in my studio where I paint, but this is primarily where I teach and I broadcast. So you're getting to see kind of my, um, how I set up a little bit in Side the studio. Um, there's a lot on this table right now. That's just because there's, uh, I was sharing lots of fun painting demos. So um, before I dive into actual painting, we are going to just talk a little bit about um, this whole idea of play and I want to share a few things before we dive in to the to share some of my favorite um, brushes. So this whole thing that I started with painting these, well, I've always painted florals and botanicals throughout my whole um, career, and the Last September, I started doing these sunrise studio sessions, and some of you might have heard this story before, but the these botanical shapes and a lot of this play started the entire this entire series. And so I'm gonna be sharing with you some of my favorite brushes on how I created this, but the whole idea was to just get into the studio every day and experiment and mark make and not let anything be um there was no set schedule there was it was just all play whatever unfolded kind of unfolded and so this is one of the sketchbooks that i worked in during that during that time and then i filled it up each one of these is one day um i would start with this one sketchbook and then start moving into a bunch of other pages so um, you can see sometimes there's just like one motif. Sometimes I was playing with the amount of water on my brush to kind of get um, to understand how the brushes worked and what they did and how I could 
kind of manipulate them. Um, and then I also was experimenting with lots of color. Every page in all of this, all of these sketchbooks that I'm showing you is all handcrafted color. I've made every single one of these colors, either a handmade watercolor or a handmade ink. And so you can kind of see, um, this was during the during that time where I was really experimenting with gold pigment and I found this pigment in Australia when I was traveling there right before the whole COVID quarantine. But you can kind of see I started just experimenting and then I was playing and then there's times when I experiment with different mixed media supplies that I have inside my inside my sketchbooks. But it starts out with, you know, one mark on one sketchbook and then I move on to a number of other surfaces so I'll keep repeating this like these marks over and over and over again and that's how you train your hand so you'll see I've got like this is just regular plain drawing paper I've got a piece of a mixed media paper that I tore out of a sketchbook um, a lot of these I started just with plain backgrounds this is a handmade paper um, a lot of the mixed media Strathmore paper and um, and then some just like uh, heavyweight cardstock just to kind of start making marks and so the reason I'm showing this is just because I want to talk about that whole idea of play where you start to experiment small and then you start to go larger. So this isn't the largest in the series that I did, but you can start to see I, I start playing with the different motifs and, and then some of the different color washes. And so I'll start and work on sometimes like five to 10 of these pieces at once. So um, from this body of work that happened, throughout the, those few months, um, I've created a number of things from it. So a lot of these are sketches, I call them paint sketches. And, um, and I never replicate the exact thing on a larger paper. These are just all of my practice mark making. And so we're gonna dive in today and I'm gonna show you some of my favorite brushes to do some of these floral techniques. Um, and so I start experimenting with adding in some mixed media and, and pigments and acrylic mediums in this one. And then there's pages where like I'm practicing, this is with that triangle brush, which I'm gonna share today. It's a silver brush. Um, and then there's a few other different brushes, but I really love to experiment to see really what a brush can do and all the different marks you can make from one, from one brush. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. Um, awesome. So I see Jessica says my fourth sketchbook revival. Oh, that's great. Um, Nancy says this was her first sketchbook revival lesson or loved your lesson. Thank you. Yeah, it's been really fun to see all the work that's been coming out of there. So from this, I also created surface pattern designs from some of that. This is all done in Procreate. Um, I've created, if you've been following me for a little bit, I'm working on my next book. So I've been creating book pages with a lot of the art too. So this is all digital. So this is actually this piece, but it's part of this book page. So this is gonna be part of my new book. And so you can see how from one, you know, from one piece of art, you can turn it into so many multiple things. So in my Instagram, there is a highlight that shows the evolution of that whole series. Um, it's under play, there's two, there's a play highlight, and then there's also one called Sunrise Studio. And you'll see, you'll get to see some of those paintings and some of the brushwork um, in more detail. So I'm gonna be painting on Strathmore Mixed Media. Um, this is one of my favorites. This actually, this is my art on the cover. So um, it's wonderful for any kind of water media, collage, um, ink, and also layering lots of stuff on top of it. So I have both the, I have some of the toned 
that I'm going to use. And then also some of the, where did I put them? I cut down a larger piece. Um, oh, here they are, I think. Where did I go? I just cut them down into smaller pieces so that I could, oh, here they are. Um, so I could work smaller and show you in the screen. So, um, these I just tear. I like to take the 11, this is the 11 by 14 size, I think. And I just tear it into small pieces with a ruler with a straight edge and then use those to paint on. So we're going to start with that. We're going to paint, um, using a little bit of watercolor. I have watercolor on my slab. This is a marble slab. This is the same setup that I had um, in the sketchbook revival lesson. And let's move this over, some of these. Um, and I use also, let's see if you can see this. Yeah, you can. So it does look a little messy, but that's just how my studio is. Um, this is a ceramic tile here. You can get that at Home Depot or Home Improvement Store. It's perfect to mix paint on to use as a little um, palette. And then I do have on this side, they're kind of buried, but I have a bunch of other like plastic well palettes. And then I have a lot of little ceramic kind of plates. I also use, uh, these are handmade, so I made these ceramics um, a few years ago. I took a ceramics course, of, I don't know, maybe like five years ago. I really want to get back into the clay studio. Um, and then sometimes I use palettes like this. Um, this is usually when I'm using acrylic mediums. I'll take a, like a, a recycled to-go container and use that as a, a palette too. So I just love having the space to work large and also to um, use bigger brushes. And so that's what working on a big slab like this allows me to do. So all of this is handmade color on here and I just let it dry on the slab and then I can come back and use it whenever I want. Um, in this little container are some of my handmade watercolors. And so each um, quarter uh, I come out with a limited edition um, set of colors. So this is the new Magnolia collection. I'm going to paint a little bit with those today. And um, you can see this, these two are also Magnolia collection. They're kind of um, dirt. They're kind of messy, not dirty, but I was painting with them already. This one actually has three different colors in it, um, all and a little bit of like this really pretty gold, and then this one's got two colors. So they have anywhere from two to four colors. This one also has two different colors from the Magnolia collection. So there are a bunch of magnolias, in, magnolia trees inside um, the neighborhood that I live in. And so I just am, I, I just love the, the flowers and the blossoms on that. And so every year I take a number of pictures and I, I was creating my, my previous collection and I'm like, I really want to do one that's inspired by the magnolia tree. So that's what these, all of these colors are. Um, okay. Uh, Linda says, I love your handmade watercolors, but every time I go to purchase the set, it's sold out. I know they sell out really quick. Um, <laughs> the Magnolia collection is now in my shop. And so I'll share a link to that a little bit later. Um, this one just released um, for pre-order. So those will be shipping um, in at the end of the month in early May. They take a little bit longer to dry. So and that's why I do them for pre-order. So I only do a really small set of colors every time. Um, okay, let's get into painting and playing a little bit. And then I actually have a Paint Dot subscription too. These are the Paint Dots from the Magnolia Collection. Um, and it's a fun way to sample. Oh, I keep hitting my desk. Sorry about that. It's a fun way to sample the paints. So... I have a, a set that comes out every quarter for that too. Okay, let's put this here and that way I have a little area to paint in. So lots of first timers in Sketchbook Revival. Awesome. Okay, how many of you paint florals? Thanks, Glenda. Um, so I'm just moving, I'm moving some of the stuff around so that I can have some space. Okay. So 
There are a few, I mean, I have so many favorites, but I'm going to show a, a few different brushes today. Um, some of these I just grabbed. So these, let's see, let's do these. Those are kind of similar there. Okay, so the one of, this is one that I was using inside of the sketchbook revival lesson. So let's see if we can get this clear. Um, I don't know if it's going to focus on there. Hold on, I think I might need to, I don't want to refocus it. Um, let's see. Hmm. Hold on, let me change my camera angle. I mean, my camera really quick to see if you can see this a little bit better. Let's do the autofocus really quick just for a minute there you go so this is the triangle this is the ruby satin line by silver and this is one of my favorites to create florals with so i'm putting that on there so in case you want to see that um and then my second are these dagger brushes so ruby um there's another one in the black velvet this is by silver also let's get that in there this is a dagger striper quarter inch and it's not wanting to focus focus on my fingers there we go oh it's too small <laughs> so i'll just show you it's got kind of more of a dagger like um and then i also love the princeton ones too um for bigger work i use these larger ones um and then i use the mop i mean the oval brush and then these mops are good for doing big background kind of washes and larger florals and then also the dagger striper this is a ruby satin um in the in the ruby yeah the ruby satin silver line also so i'm gonna paint with some of those um and then for the stripes on some of my some of my work and some other fun floral techniques i actually love these um the grainers so we will paint a little bit with a couple of these and i'm going to show just some different marks first um, because i think that's the key to uh that's the key to creating and and training your hand um with the with the brushes um one thing before you start using any, these aren't brand new, but if you have a, let me see if I have a brand new brush anywhere. If you have a brand new brush, it does help to uh, first take the brush and you actually use like a pellet knife or a knife and just kind of lightly grab the hairs like so, so that there you take out anything that's loose. So that's just a little tip. I am notori notoriously bad about cleaning my brushes. This one got dyed because I was making an ink and I use, some of my inks have dye based, or dye based ink. And so it, it dyed the bristles, this really pretty blue color. So now it was originally that, that light color. Um, let's go into this paint and I'm going to, um, See, do I have a little thing? I'm just going to take a dropper and some water. And I like to put a little bit of water inside my pans. You could do this with the brush too, but it helps to. And then I'm just going to put a little bit here. Okay. I have to go back and read so some of you paint florals love florals awesome okay so let's start with the triangle because that's the one that i use this is one of my favorites so if you look at this brush you can see it's actually a triangle like it looks like a triangle when you look at it it's got like they they basically took the brush and like cut it that way so it's got this really beautiful shape on it and so let's do let's do some first in the in this color here so i'm gonna just wet some of this 
I originally Uh, you can see there's like a bunch of little speckles. That's because I had put some other um, pigment in there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the paint down on the on the um, marble slab. Let's move these over really quick. And I could use this one too. Put a little water in there. And actually, I probably should. see that kind of. there we go okay so I've got a little bit of pigment in here so before I do any kind of floral I just want to show you um, how I work with the brush I actually have a really light touch I'm not like way up here you know trying to paint with it like holding a pen I I I hold the brush really, really lightly. And this, this particular brush, there's so many different marks you can make. Depending on the pressure that you make and how much paint's loaded on it, you can make really skinny lines. You can make really thick lines if you're gonna use the side of it. Um, and then you can make varied width lines by holding it really softly and then pressing and swiping and then letting up on the pressure and then you can start to see you get these varied thicknesses so that's the first thing that i encourage you to do when you start playing with the brushes that you have um, is to actually just make marks like this and don't try and like make anything first um you know figure out like what this brush does like what kinds of lines can you make with it this can make really thin lines you could do a nice wash with this underneath my water's dirty but and you can you know drag paint through so really experimenting with the mark first you know i'm not trying to make anything except for playing with what this brush can do so a lot of times i will use it like a stamp so you can see it looks completely different Oops. when I use it this way. It's almost, I'm, I'm using it a different way, but it's an opposite direction. So when I go up, you know, I get a whole different mark than when I used it the, the doing similar thing, but it looks totally different. So you can get all kinds of different floral shapes with a lot of these brushes. I'm mixing in some of the other colors here. If you have questions that relate to what I'm doing, just feel free to put them in the ask a question section and then I'll, um, I'll look at those in a minute. So if you want lots of texture, you could do some fun little dabbing motions. So you can see this one brush is so versatile. There's lots you can do. And then in a minute, I'm going to show you how I paint my florals with it. There's a few different styles of flowers and botanicals that I, I paint. So really the first thing I encourage you to do with any brush or tool that you have is to first do something like this where you are just experimenting so if i turn it on its side i can get a whole nother type of petal shape and if i drag it that creates a whole different type of shape too so have fun experimenting and also experiment with the amount of, of paint that you have on your on your brush Okay, so let's go and I'm going to show you 
a couple of different flowers that you can create. So I already started that one a little bit over there on the other one. So just by kind of doing the stamping, kind of dabbing motion, I can get something that kind of looks like a daisy. Um, I'm really like, I paint just random, like more abstract florals. I'm never trying to paint anything I see like in front of me, which I could if I wanted to, but a lot of times I'm just painting these kind of random flowers as I think of, think of them. Um, one of the other types that I love doing something that is like this. I start with this little center area and then I just drag my brush and then I start to pull out petals from the center. So I didn't load any more paint on my brush yet. Um, sometimes I'll do this and actually put water on my brush so that my petals get really, really light. So I'm just dragging out, turning it on the side, and then lifting really, really lightly to get that edge. And that's the one thing I love about this brush, because you can get those really thin lines if you, if you want them. And then one of the things that I did inside of, um, inside the sketchbook revival lesson, let's see, I'm trying to do this so that you can see the brush strokes. is I need like a different angle on this I think here this will work um, so if you tilt it on the side and kind of twist you can get another whole different kind of leaf looking shape press and lift press and lift and then I can just take the edge of the brush and lightly use the tip of the brush to create those other those other shapes so it all has to do with the amount of pressure you're using when you are using the brush and the way the angle that you're holding the brush and you can get some different interesting shapes from that So sometimes I just put more water on my brush and I like to drag out the color that's already there. So this is one of the colors inside the new Magnolia collection. Um, I'll put a little swatch here at the bottom so you can see it. This is actually two of the colors that are in there because they're mixing together. So it gets this really deep kind of fuchsia color. And then if I put more water on my brush, I can really drag it out to light, a lighter pink color. Okay, so that's one brush. This is the silver ruby satin triangle brush. Yeah, Jen says like spider orchids. Yeah, that's what that one reminds me of, yes. <laughs> Um, okay, let's move this one over to let that dry just a tad. And then some of these, when you work with them, I mean, they kind of can make similar lines um, for you, but I'm going to show you another, uh, another dagger, two different daggers, the dagger striper in the, um, black velvet line and then the dagger striper and the ruby satin line. So you can see one's longer um, and thinner, and they both have a similar curve, but I'll show you, the, these these bristles, because they're so much longer, they, they actually flow. Um, in my Instagram stories from yesterday, you can see a close-up of some of the botanicals I was painting with these. Let's see. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Change my camera. Let's grab another piece of paper. How's everybody doing? Is anybody painting? Um, Lynn says, unfortunately, we can get only 
a few art supplies here. I'll look for a dagger brush. Yeah, there's a lot of different companies that have that create dagger brushes. So I'm sure you could find it. Um, uh, yes, you could use a flat brush. Um, you could also, if you if you wanted to, cut your if you have an extra paintbrush, you could cut your paintbrush to this shape. <laughs> I do it all the time. Um, but, you know, you can also buy them like this. But a flat brush, let me see if I have a flat brush. I'll show you the difference. Um, I'll paint, I'll paint you. I'll paint with this. Oh, this is only, I left a lot of my brushes at the, let me see if there's a flat brush here. You can get something kind of similar but there's this because this has an angle it really does create a a beautiful line more so than a flat brush um i just have always done my a lot of my floral work with the dagger a dagger style brush okay so we're gonna paint with a little of this paint in here and the paints in this one are some of my favorite. This one has kind of this like bluish gray color. You can kind of see it there. And then it also has, there's like another color in there that has a little bit of gold. So you can kind of see the gold coming up. It's this deep turquoise gold. I've been experimenting with how many different golds I can make with this pigment that I bought in Australia, and it's so pretty. So a lot of times what I'll do is I take, load it up on the brush, and then I put it into a bowl like this, and then I just add water as I need it in the bowl, and then I can let this dry in the bowl too. So these are just little ceramic um, plates or I don't know if you consider it a bowl or a plate. It's like a cross between them. <laughs> um, let's see. So we'll use this one first. And I'll show you. Um, this, the line with this is really fun because you can make skinny. And then if you press out, you can make kind of these leaf shapes press out and lift. So it's all about the how much pressure you're using. And then also the angle that you put that brush. So I don't know if you can see it very well or not, but this has a little bit of a green because there's green in here too. So it's got the green, a teal colorish and a, and a gold. It looks black in my camera though <laughs> on this monitor. So I don't know. Um, let's mix it in with this grayish blue color here. And oh, hold on. Let me change my camera. Um, I had put the autofocus on. Let's do that just so it doesn't change. Uh, so I normally start with the line and then when I use this, I can turn it sideways and get the leaf shape that way too. And you can get really thick shapes with it. Oop, my camera is so low, hitting the camera. Sorry about that. <laughs> and you if you twist you see what I just did there 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 I I like pressed it and then I twisted it up and then I can get these like wonky kind of more wonky shapes so I do that quite a bit too is when I use it I take it I press it and then I lift so um that is also one way that you can use it. I just really encourage you to experiment and to play with all of the brushes that you have. So that's the dagger striper in the ruby satin line. Um, the dagger striper in this line, it's also silver. It's the black velvet line. Um, let I'll show you this one. We'll do...
Let's do a mix of these two colors. And I'm trying to get it so you can see. I have to hold it back here. <laughs> when I paint, I normally am more on top of my my uh, drawing or my painting, but because I want you to be able to see it, um, I'm holding it uh, in a way that you can actually see the paper. <laughs> so I should actually wear my glasses. Hold on. <laughs> Everything's so blurry. <laughs> I gotta get my readers. <sighs> So this one is also another one where you can really make these really beautiful, almost like graceful lines. If you press lightly, press harder, lift up, and then let the tip do the final little, like, that final little piece there. Like that. So you can get these really, like, fine line stripes at the end. Uh, Jen says, reminds me a bit of calligraphy brushwork. Yes, totally. Um, I am, I love hand lettering. I am not a, I would not consider myself a calligrapher, but I love, I could actually do, I don't know, it's not really, it's my own alphabet. <laughs> it's not like a traditional kind of alphabet. So this one, I'm using it more towards the side and, and then pulling to the left. And then, so this one, I still have a really light touch. Like I'm barely touching the paper while I'm doing that. Um, uh, Linda asked, what are these colors called that you are using, Tracy? So this is part of my Magnolia collection. They're part of my handmade watercolor line. Um, I'll share a link, uh, towards the end of them. So the colors on here there, so every color set I do, uh, it comes in either two or three pans. Plus I also give uh, these little, I usually add in the paint dots. So you get the uh, the whole, like most of the collection, either in the pan or in the paint dots. That way you kind of can play with everything. But this lasts a, lo a long time. Um, you can do a lot of washes um, and you can paint, you know, lots of different floral shapes. I'm really loving this guy right here. That's a lot of fun. Um, but the other nice thing with this brush is you can make like really skinny lines too. Skinny and then add like thin and then add. Um, versus this one though, you can do the same thing. You can actually get, this one's a little bit more flowy just because how loose the, the bristles are on that one. But if I go in and use this, I think there was still some pink on there. Oh well. Um, let's grab another sheet of paper. And again, this is the mixed media paper. So these will also look different when you use them on watercolor paper. I probably should have grabbed some watercolor paper. Here, we'll do it on the toned. I'll just show you the difference. So this one is fun because you can get really thin, kind of almost grass-like quality line because that it's just such a, a, it's just such a, um, tighter brush and so sometimes I'll do that and then you can also do this too where you press but you can see it's a little different like it doesn't go as wide as the dagger striper on there so if I do the dagger striper on here let's do You get a little thin line, you can get thin lines, and then when you press, you can, it's a, definitely a, a different line. It's a lot thicker, a lot more, a lot more flowy. This one, you can see the, and you can see the difference in the amount of paint that's released, depending on how you press. So you can see where I lifted up and pressed harder, there's more, there's more watercolor on there. And then I can actually mix some of my inks. So this is also part of the Magnolia collection. I usually make handmade inks as part of that too. There's two different ones on this one. This one's a little more, um, this one has a little bit of a, a little titanium white in it. So it gives you kind of this, this color. And then this one's got a little bit of gray pigment in it. 
But these are fun too. I'm just going to take a little bit of this and then put it in there. You can hear Andy, my little puppy. She's like, it's her lunchtime. <laughs> She's like, mommy, feed me. Um, so let's go and add a little bit. So you can, it's fun to kind of mix both of the brushes together too. I know, I'm almost done. She's a little, if you haven't seen her, she's a little Yorkie uh, Maltese. <laughs> oh, she's so funny. Okay. Um, yeah, um, Joanne says, beautiful. You like it looks so easy. So really, it really is like doing this mark thousands of times. Like if you see, when I come back on camera, I'll hold up the stack of sketchbooks that I have, you know, done this kind of painting in. Um, so that's three of the brushes. What were some of the others that I um, had? Oh, let's do this flat brush. And um, this big brush, I actually love to use it to do stuff like this. And actually the, the dagger striper I do too, just to do color palette work. I, I love using this kind of brush for that. Um, let's move this. Let's take a flat brush. Somebody was asking like if you can make, this is a really big flat brush. So I, this is the only one I could find sitting here. Um, this is a three quarters of an inch. So uh, if you use this to draw like florals and leaves, like I never really use it to, but you can, um, you can see what I did there where I took it, pressed it and pressed it kind of like this so you get like a diagonal and then I slowly lift it and then twist it and then I can get a leaf shape that looks like that. So you can, you know, get a, a nice looking leaf shape. It's just a little bit more work versus like using a dagger, a dagger striper kind of brush or a dagger brush um, or a triangle brush. But, you know, these make more of, let's see, you can't see that. So if I twist up like that, then I can get some interesting, like more florally botanical shapes with this brush. And then I could come in with another paintbrush if I wanted to, and then just add some of the accents in there. So really i i like i said when i started it's all about experimenting so i mean i would have i have like whole journals that are just like these random marks <laughs> that i make in them because i want to just practice the line so like with this with this brush this flat brush you know you can get some really interesting texture lines by stamping um, let's just do a, a big floral because this is a this is kind of a big. So normally I would do this with a round brush, and I'm going to show you. Oops, I can do this with this too, but we'll see how it looks. I'm just randomly putting it on there. <laughs> uh, let's see what happens. So I'm just pressing and twisting out. It's that same technique I kind of showed earlier, but um, using using the flat brush. So you can definitely see it's a different flower shape for sure, but it's still pretty. Um, it's kind of fun. Let's bring up, bring a little stem down, and make a little leaf shape. So if you see that, you could go, I would definitely go back and watch how I did that. But really it's this whole idea of taking the, the brush and pressing it down and then like twisting it different ways. So that way you can see, you can get, it could be a petal, it could be a leaf. You could let that dry and then draw on top of it. Um, but I challenge you to just spend like 15, 20 minutes, like for a week and and 
do pages like this where um, you take different brushes and see how many different marks you can you can make on them. So that flat brush did a, a pretty um, fun fun floral, and that was a half inch. I mean, no, three four three quarters of an inch wash. Um, you know, you can really use it to create some beautiful washes too. Like I could just create a nice wash of my my inks just so I have a little swatch there too of the different colors that I used. I had water in the middle there so you can see what happens when there's water there. Okay. Um, Lynn says, got it. A pretty good leaf tip with the flat brush, lessening the pressure at the tip. Yes. So that's how, that's what it's all about really is the, the amount of pressure and then the way that you flick the brush, oops, and the way that you, you move the brush on the paper and that, and that amount of pressure, you'll get those thinner, those thinner lines. Okay. This is the last one I think I'm going to share is this little guy. Um, let's grab, where's the other pan? There it is. I'm just going to mix these two together over here. I don't know why it looks so dark on this, on the screen. I just want to check something over here. On yeah, it's weird. I think it's just my other screen. My other screen is making this look really dark. My, I have two monitors and one is darker. I'm just going to turn up the brightness just a little bit in case you have a darker monitor. Um, okay. So this little wash guy, um, this oval, I'm going to grab a little bit of this color here. So I'm really a messy painter, like, you know, that's just how I am. So one of the things I'm going to do, and actually, I'm just going to kind of bring this wash down with that. And then let's grab some of this color with this little guy. So that's one of my favorite things to do is just to um, see how the paint collection works together. So um, I'll do these like these washes of color just to see what happens when the, the pigments mix with each other, varying amounts of water, different brushes. Um, and this one has a little bit of one of the other paints inside it already and then we'll just do a little mark down here in the center and we'll do a couple more with these other let's grab this brighter pink and throw it down here So these are a fun way to do um, color swatching when you are experimenting with any paint that you're working with. Um, I use it full. I use the paint full strength, and I dip my brush in water, and then start to drag and pull uh, the color with water just to see what happens. And then I'll add a little bit more water into my brush. Sometimes I will add the water like that and then drag a few more marks so you get an idea of what your color palette that you're working with is there's actually three colors in this one but you can't see the green there's a stripe of green that's in the middle of this 
I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but. And then we'll just do one more and then I'll answer some questions. Okay. So, let's see. Some of you, I'm going to move your questions into the question and answer. Um, Roberta says, I would never have thought a flat brush could do that. Yes, I always just use, their, use it for a wash. Awesome, I'm glad you're gonna give it a try. Gashar says, messy is good. Yes, I'm part of the messy, the messy paint club. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the questions. I am going to come back on the screen. Hopefully, let me just look to see if there's any questions I can answer while I'm demoing. Um, what's a brand? Okay, I'll come back and do that. Um, Let's see, Lynn asked, how do you avoid the pool of watercolor the brush leaves at the end of a stroke, particularly a broad stroke? Um, you know, that, <laughs> I, that's a good question. A lot of that has to do with the paper that you use sometimes. Um, different paper is going to hold the paints and inks a different way. Like I never really have paid much attention to that. Um, I'm trying to think of, she said, at the end of the stroke, particularly a broad stroke. Yeah, so are you talking about like here? Can you, are you still here, Lynn? Um, well, there's not really a pool of watercolor. Um, I think it also depends on the amount of water you have on your brush that will cause that. Will cause that. Um, so you can see here, so I am getting a little pool at the end there, but, I actually like what's gonna, so when this dries, uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna bloom very much. Like this right here, it's like there's this weird line there. So that one's gonna, you're gonna see that, but that one might dry okay. One of the things you could do if you didn't want that pool of water there and you had a lot is take a paper towel and just at the end of it, have it soak up all the water. Like you just dip it in there and then you can pull up the the water that's at the edge of your of your piece that you don't want there but um a lot of times it really it, it depends on the paper you're using the amount of water that's on your brush the type of brush you're using and a lot of it's just experimentation so like this color that i'm using here has a lot of titanium white in it so it's a very opaque paint so when you paint with it um and because i put i loaded a lot of color on that particular um, brush when I was painting this little this little set of um, leaves um, you're I don't get any of that pool there's a tiny bit of pooling there but it's not a lot of watercolor it's just the amount it's just because I had that paint on my brush so a lot of times it is the brush this one I used the um, this striper from the back black velvet line and and because the bristles are so much looser it flows the the paint flows a little bit more so that'll cause you know that kind of pooling so if i wanted to take it up i could just like put this piece of paper and start pulling it and you can see it just that one really went quickly and and got back up on there so really i think it's a, a lot of it is the experimentation with it okay so let me go i'm going to switch back to my camera and if you have to leave, you can always come back and watch the replay right at the same link. So don't worry about it. Um, if you missed anything, you can always go back. It, it's, it's, um, the replay is available right after. Okay, let me come back onto screen, answer some questions. I lost my, oh, here it is, my little pen. I use a pen tablet. Okay, hang tight for one minute.
Okay. Hold on. Let me change this back. It looks a little blown out now. <laughs> um, it looks a little bright on my camera. There we go. Okay. Let me grab your questions. And while I do that, Let's see. Rhea asked or says, I watched your sketchbook revival lesson and enjoyed it very much. I would like to know how you paint the leaves with that special brush. Oh good. I said I I did I showed that demo. So hopefully, Rhea, if you're here. Um, yes, I didn't realize that you couldn't see. <laughs> I was just painting the whole time. And I think also, so, so was Karen. So I didn't notice until the video went live that you couldn't see a lot of it. <laughs> so if you go to my Instagram on my highlights, there are a few different highlights. The one that says play, um, uh, the one that says Magnolia, uh, it shows how I use that brush in there. It's the new Magnolia collection and the play highlight. And there's a little, there's one that has like a little sunrise icon and says studio. You can see a lot of the brushwork in there in more detail because I'm actually holding my iPhone while I'm painting. So you can see the angle of the brush a little bit better. Okay. Um, Roberta asked, can you post the, a list somewhere of the names and sizes of the variety of brushes you are using? Yes, I have. I, I will. I have a photograph that I took of a lot of the brushes. And so I will be sending out an email, um, with, if you took sketchbook revival and you're on my freebie list, or if you're on my email list, um, I'll be sharing that in there. So, um, if you're not on those lists, then you can also send up, sign up for my email list and you'll get that. I'm, I'll probably be able to send it out later this week. Um, and then just in case, Mary, you didn't see this, she says, what brand and size of the triangle brush? So this is the silver ruby satin triangle. And it, there's not really a size. There's a number on here, but it's not the size of the brush. Let's look at, let me tell you what the number is. I think, I don't know if it's a product number, ID number. 2515S. That's what it says on there. Let's see. Let's see what you can see. I, um, let me grab my camera. It's this. It's probably going to be blurry. Yeah, that is blurry. Um, I have it, I don't have it on autofocus, but silver is the manufacturer. Um, okay, back to questions. Which dag which kind of dagger is better for a beginner long one or short one? Susanna asked. Um, you know, are you talking about your long or short handle? Um, if you're painting kind of sitting down like this, a short handle brush is better. If you're talking about the, um, the, the amount of bristles, um, the longer and shorter, it just depends or the size, it just depends on how big of the florals or the botanicals you're creating. So if you're painting large, so like this, this painting, I didn't have any, I was trying to find my, my large, large, like 18 by 20 paintings, but I think they're in the, they're in my other studio. Um, so this is, uh, what is this? This is probably 18 down here. Um, and, or lengthwise, um, and to paint these larger botan, like the larger florals, uh, the three, what is it? Mm, half inch. When I paint 18 by 20 size, I like the half inch brush size because um, it can make larger florals. So as far as beginner goes, I think that um, either any brush is great. Like it's all about just practicing um, and you'll start to get a feel for what like the stiffness of the brush because this brush is a lot stiffer, this triangle and um, you can get like, like a, what's the right word? like a more precise 
mark versus something that's more like the um, black velvet or the neptune series by princeton these because like they're so much more floppy you get these like more i feel like they're a little bit more elegant lines um i have a video in my ig tv um that shows me painting it's a it's a it's a uh what do you call that it's a um time lapse video so it's really short but you can see it uh, see me painting on a large surface and I'm using one of the bigger dagger stripers and um, I just really that that is probably my favorite um, the triangle and then any of the dagger stripers like those long ones because they make such flowing flowers um, okay I'm I'm skipping some of the questions um, I'm gonna come back to them but I just wanted to kind of give you answers to all of the ones that pertain to the supplies first. Um, Tracy, when you paint, do you rest your little finger on the paper? I don't think I do. <laughs> you know what? I have to go back and watch the videos. I don't think I do because I actually hold the brush like really high up most of the time. Sometimes I might be down here. So my pinky is actually not even touching the brush. That's just my personal way that I use the brush. Um, when I find that if you have your pinky, and it depends on what you're doing. So maybe if it's lettering, you might have to have your pinky down. But when you're that close to the paper where like your pinky can reach it, that means you're way down on the brush. And that's just not how I hold the brush. Like I hold the brush like way high. And so my pinky is actually floating. I don't even have it touching the brush. So I'm really painting with these with these three fingers and my thumb and the other one just kind of float my pinky kind of floats there so um yeah i have to go back and look i i've never touched the paper with my with my hand um and i don't even know how comfortable for me that would be so um you know really it, it's about letting yourself be loose and if you have to stand up i actually paint standing up most of the time even if i'm working on like a small paper like that or a small journal um i have music music blasting in my studio and i have a paint table that's higher up so that i can paint standing because when you are kind of able to move a little bit more you're not so tight when you're painting and if you can like paint on larger surfaces um like that video and i'll try and put the links in here um that that i was telling you about you just get this like more flowy um this more flowy mark making that you get um lynn asked do you usually work dry on dry with an occasional wa with the occasional wash i do both so um, I know some of you probably have to go, but I'll just share a couple more things. Um, let's see if I can find something easily. I've just got stacks of things. Let's see. So this is pretty much dry. Well, there was a little bit of wet underneath that, but that's pretty much dry on dry. Um, this is a wet wash and then um, a dry brush on top of it. So I experiment because I love the, I love what happens when you have, so sometimes I do, I'll, I'll let the wash dry and paint over it. It gives you a totally different look. I talk a lot about this in my pigment to pay paint play, um, course. Um, and I just painted these other ones yesterday. I have to see if I can find them. Let me see if I can find one, a couple more. So this is wet, wet on wet first, um, the background, and then I start. I let it sit for just a little bit, and then I load up. So all these darker colors um, with these botanicals, those then I load up um, with a lot of pigment. I load it on my brush so that I can get that darker line, and it makes. A, a thicker uh, um it's like a uh, not a thicker consistency of consistency it's a more opaque i should say um this one was fun so this is a big wide flat brush um 
I don't know if I can grab it. It's over there. But playing with like varying sizes of brushes as your washes in the background. And I dipped it into a couple of my watercolors first. Um, and then this one here is, I really started really loving the doing wet on wet, but um, doing it in a, in a way where I'm working with like, I have literally like six to 10 pieces of paper out on my studio table on my floor and I rotate. So sometimes they get a little bit more time to dry. Um, and then sometimes I just go for it. And while the wash is still wet, um, it creates such a beautiful, what I like to call kind of a faded floral effect. So you wash, you put the wash down and then you paint right into it and you get these beautiful, like, I, they're, I call them faded florals. <laughs> um, I did a whole series like that with the whole faded floral idea, um, which is something that I've been loving experimenting with. So um, some, some great questions. I really encourage you, like I said, to play. Uh, let's see. And then Glenda asks, how are the ink dots included with the paint pans used? I got some and do not know what to do. Ah, so the paint dots... It's the same, it's basically paint on a paper, on paper. So all you do is take your brush and, and water and then just put it right on top and you've got watercolor. And you just use this. Um, what I love to do, which I don't think I have here, is I staple them onto chipboard and then I tuck that into my journal. You got a piece of chipboard with these also if you got this size. And you just staple them side by side and then you have like a whole strip of the watercolor dots. I'll see if I can post a picture because I have them out in the front. Um, and then you can see, let me just paint this on something while I have it on here. Um, this is, let's see if I can paint backwards. <laughs> This was uh, one of the colors from my, um, I think it was, this might have been from my holiday collection, I think. This is beautiful, like, purple color. So that's the, that's how you use those paint dots. Um, there is a ton of paint. This is a lot. Like, if you get paint dots from other companies, they're usually, like, a little dot. This is, like, a quarter of a pan amount of paint. Um, so it does last quite a bit. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Lynn asked, do you ever use an easel? I do not, actually. I have one, but I never use it. I have an old, old one. Um, I usually paint on the table because I'm working smaller. Even when I do work large, I usually tack the canvas onto the wall and I paint flat on the wall. I also have a big piece of... Um, what is that stuff called for the floor um, plywood, which is what is it like eight feet by six feet or something like that, that I use as a painting board. So it it can it can like um, go diagonal because I kind of make it like lean against the wall and then I hang my canvases and or um, paper up on there and I paint right on top of that. I'll usually clip the papers with like uh, those bulldog clips or binder clips onto the plywood, but yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a big easel painter. Um, if I'm painting really large fabric, like I love painting, um, raw canvas and muslin. Um, I just tack it up onto the wall and I paint right up onto the wall. Um, the only other thing that I might use is I have sawhorses, uh, you know, those, uh, from the hardware store. And sometimes I put the canvas on there if I'm painting like a big canvas. Okay. And last but not least, oh wait, there's more. Um, let's see. Lynn asks, one teacher in, in Sketch Revi Revival said that watercolors tend to fade, so she painted over it a couple of times. Do you find this to be true? So it depends on the, the type of watercolor, the pigment that's in it. Um, most of the pigments I use are light fast pigments. So a lot of times if you're buying store-bought watercolor, um, what you're going to look for is, let's see if I can grab this. So I have a bunch of tubes of watercolor in here. So 
so like on the core watercolors this is the gold golden brand if you look on the back they usually tell you the light fastness i think or you have to look it online i can't remember um i'm so bad at that let's see if this one does usually it'll tell you uh, i know on that on the well here like on this daniel smith one it does say like it'll say light fastness one and it also depends on the series series three so i'd have to look these up because i can't remember but the series when you look on the series that'll tell you also um i thought they were on these core but i guess they're not um so that's the only thing that i can um, imagine is going to cause your watercolor fading or if you have it in the sun so i never really like if you look at the marks i make i don't go over my my leaf shapes or my florals um on purpose i never really do that but i also am using most of the watercolor i'm using is my handmade watercolor so it's highly pigmented um it's very very like if you're buying handmade color most handmade i don't want to say most i don't know if everybody does but like for me there's so much pigment in my paints that you can get a gouache looking effect like if you look at how these dry you can get a gouache looking effect by loading your paint really um you know a lot on your brush all the way to these wa watercolor wash effects where you have a lot more water where you get more of a transparent so you can see right here in this one color how light the the color can be when you add more water and then if you just use the color right out of the the pan or the dot card you get that dark dark color so um that that's the only thing i would think when it comes to the fading so let me see there was another question about my mixed media lab membership um anastasia and um, she said how much will your mixed media lab membership be so it is going to be opening in the end of april beginning of may i'm moving over my mixed media lab to a new content hub so those of you who had signed up for my sketchbook revival um freebie and also if you're on my uh, mailing list already email list you got access to the new mixed media lab preview hub and so that's the same that's the same hub or the same content platform that i'm moving all of my courses to um so that will that there, there'll be a range um from 27 all the way up to um 67 it depends on what you have access to within the mixed media lab and my new play membership which is a monthly um subscription where we'll be doing this like what i'm showing here where every month we focus on a different um mixed media uh uh, a different mixed media project and then you will also um, get access to my new um, paint swatch play workshops quarterly workshops which are uh, all to do with paint swatching um, it's something that I've been wanting to launch in the last two years and finally I'm getting to, to launch it I've talked about it and actually promoted it for a while but um, so to answer your question Anastasia it will be from between 27 and 67 it just depends there's also creative business classes that are part of that um and and so that that level is a little bit higher um but i'll be sharing more details about that soon i'm i'm really excited about it and i actually will have a fun founding member special so that will be coming up in the next few weeks i'll, sh I'll definitely share more so until then um i am going to probably be doing another one or two live streams like this um but this really was to share more about the brushes and the painting of the florals um and so i really encourage you to just go back and rewatch this and then spend like i said 15 minutes to half an hour a day experimenting with your brushes and not feeling like you have to make something like you could just experiment like this where you're making marks and this is some of my favorite pages inside of my journals where it is just a bunch of random marks because this lets you also experiment with 
the amount of water you load on your brush, the amount of pigment you load on your brush, mixing colors. Um, there's so much that you can do. And that's kind of some of the stuff that we're going to focus on in my play membership. Every month we'll, we'll do fun experiments like that um, where we really dive into like working with the supplies that we have and playing um, to create a body of work. But also I'll talk about how you take that body of work and turn it into different things. Like the thing, the thing that I'm going to leave you with is um, this last thing. So it, for me, what I am doing, because this is my business, I am painting to play, but that play turns into products. So I'm just going to tell you really quickly the list. I, I put it in my notion um, as I was prepping for this, for this, um, for this particular live stream. So, um, so from this whole experimentation for my Sunrise Studios, I have developed an art collection of originals and prints that I will eventually sell. And that's also digital prints. I've, um, I've developed three paint collections. Um, digital stencils and then stamps and actual physical stencils, a uh, service pattern design collection, book pages, so for my brand new book that I'm writing, um, videos and IG stories and tutorial videos, um, promotion graphics, so a lot of some of these end up in the graphics that you see online or to promote like different things that I'm that I'm sharing. And it's turned into online course and also this free live stream. So um i hope that you get to see how you can turn you know one little mark into a whole variety of things um really thinking beyond what you do in your sketchbook i know many of you this is your hobby and this is what you love to do as a as um something just to relax and and let the stress go which is totally awesome and i hope that's um that you continue to do that that's one of the big things that i encourage with the play is really using it um as time to really just enjoy the process but for those of you who are at that next level there is this whole opportunity from one mark that you can turn into so many different things and so that's what i'm going to be sharing within my new play membership just that that whole that whole idea of taking um, something that you're just playing and exploring with, but then also all the other things that you can turn it into. So I will share some links. Um, if you watch, if you are here live, I will put a link in to, um, a, something that has more of things that will link out to my paint line, to the brushes, um, and all of that fun stuff. I'll share that, um, soon. And if you're on my email list, that'll all come through email. So today, just to wrap up, I shared a little bit about five different brushes and how you can use them to create a variety of different marks and florals. I'll take a snapshot of everything that I made today and post it on um, Instagram. So if you aren't following me on there, you can find me at Tracy Designs. Um, so the five, actually more than five brushes because I shared that flat brush too, but just showing you the variety of marks you can make um, and really encouraging you how you can, you know, use your tools and depending on how you paint and press the pressure, the amount of color, the amount of water, and the type of paper, you can really get some beautiful marks. And we talked a little bit more about my new paint collections, the Magnolia collection, and I hope you picked up one or two things today that you will find um, helpful in your creative journey. I would love to know before you leave, if there's anything that you would love to learn more about. Um, if you could leave it in the chat, that would be great as a closing thought. Um, where are you stuck now? What do you want more help with? I'm developing all of my content calendars for the next quarter actually right now. So I would love to hear more about what it is that you would love to learn about. So I know I shared a lot today and I hope you spend some time to play and experiment and explore and really just em enjoy the creative process. And make sure you get to dive into my Mixed Media Lab um, preview. 
if you're not already a member inside there, um, you can you can get access to it by signing up for my email list. Um, but there is a ton of videos in there. Um, let me just do I have it up? I don't even know if I don't think I even have it up. Let's see. What time is it? I am trying to get out of here in a, a timely, a timely fashion. Um, let's if you have to go, feel free to go. I'm going to pull this up really quick so you can see it and I'll share it really quick. Um, and you can always come back and watch. I know I tend to talk quite a bit and I always have a, I'd like, I'd love to do a live stream that's 20 minutes. It just doesn't, <laughs> it just doesn't happen for me. I, I talk a lot. Um, okay, here it is. So this is, let me get it to the right frame. Um, you should see it here. So inside the new Mixed Media Lab preview, um, there are a bunch of videos. I actually was originally only going to put 15 in there, but I think I shared over 35. So there's a lot. Some of them are previews of some classes, but there is a lot of tutorial in there too. Um, some of them are live streams. Some of them, like if you click on here, this is like one of my studio notes um, that you can listen to. Um, I, I record these studio notes like every, every so often um, about like things that are going on in the studio. But you'll find all kinds of fun resources. The one thing that I forgot to share when I was doing my overview video is that there are a couple of things that you can you can do when you're inside a video. So this is the Mixed Media Lab Library preview. There are over 600 videos inside the Mixed Media Lab. Um, I am going to rotate out some of these videos every quarter. So definitely come in here and watch as much as you can because I am going to change them out. Um, just to give you a feel for all of the variety of things that are in there. So inside here, if you are inside a video, there's a couple things you can do. Um, you can actually turn on captions if you need captions. So there are U.S. English captions. Um, and keep in mind that I do not edit the captions, so I'm not really sure if they're going to be very... They should be pretty accurate, but you can actually... Um, you can actually... Um, show the captions there um, and you can search any of the videos in here to get to specific um, things like if I put art journal you'll see all the places where I mention art journal pop up so that's one of the nice things about I use searchy to host all of my videos I have been since they started um, so I've been a customer for a long time and I love it it's really a great tool um, you can some of these, if there is any kind of um, transcript, you I, most of these I don't have the transcript um, on, but if, they're, if they do have a transcript, you can actually download the transcript. Part of that reason I don't have the transcript available is just because I have not edited those transcripts, so who knows <laughs> what um, funny language, uh, you know, they pick up while I'm talking. Um, so inside the uh, preview, you get that. And then there's lots of replays of some of my live sessions. I put some bonus digital canvas uh, Procreate tutorials in there. So if you love painting on the iPad, um, definitely check those out. And then I wanted just to show you, some of you were having a trouble downloading the, the playbook. This is a 20, well, it's actually 20 or 22 pages. I can't remember. Um, all about creative process. I really go in depth about some of the things I do to jumpstart my creative practice. And so if you're downloading this, you should be able just to download it and then it'll pop up in your downloads. If you're on your, um, if you're on your phone, a lot of times what happens if you're on an iPhone, there's a little download button that it goes to. So you have to click on the little download in order to access it. Because it's such a large file, it's like 27 megabytes just because there's so much imagery in the in the PDF um, that it 
it's a large file, so you have to download it first. So that I think might have been, and I think a few of the people who contacted me, they had a problem um, because they were, I don't know if it was because they were on a PC or not. So that I just wanted to share really quickly. So that little hub there gives you a nice little preview of some of my, um, a lot of my teachings. I've been teaching online for over a decade. I was one of the pioneers in the mixed media world to start teaching. I started teaching online in like 2008. So um, I have a big library of content, but I do a lot like this where it's live. Um, coming up, I have the Play Membership and the Mixed Media Lab. I have the color, my book, my book project, the book journey, um, the color adventure is starting in April and that whole, um, that whole online program has been so much fun. It's, it's really getting a behind the scenes peek at my book writing process. And so the color adventure actually dives into, um, handmade color and color palettes and really talking about stories and colors and memory. Um, so you get to see that portion of me um, writing the book, or not actually writing, but hearing more about the process of me writing. Um, and then I have a pigment to paint play, um, my course, uh, my paint making course, and that will be in the May time frame. Um, I'm, I think what I'm going to do is do it in like a four week kind of broken down into a four week um, session. And then um, in June, I have new stencils coming out with Stencil Girl. And later in the fall, I have a brand new digital canvas um, academy slash procreate pattern um, big signature course that I'm launching. And so those are some of the things that are coming up. So thank you for everybody who has stayed with me this long. I know it's been a long, <laughs> a long um, live stream. So I really appreciate it. I'm grateful that you are here and part of my community. I will be sharing more via email. And if, and if you are not on Instagram or don't follow me yet, definitely, definitely connect with me there because that's where I share most of my content these days. So lots in stories, lots in video. And I am so thrilled that you are here have take some time to have fun and experiment and play i'll see you next time and have a great week bye